and just for a minute, can we just begin to lift up the name Jesus? Can we just begin just to tell him thank you and how grateful we are? Come on, can you just open up your hearts? Open up your mouths today. Come on, let's just begin to stand to our feet, amen. And we acknowledge our daddy this morning, hallelujah. We acknowledge him because he's a God who loves us. He's a father who takes care of us. He covers us. He shields us. He gets in it in the midst with us in the name of Jesus. And we lift you up today. We magnify you. We exalt you today. We put your name above our circumstance. We put your name above our problems. We put your names above our issues today. And we exalt you. We declare today that you're greater than the problem. You're greater than the pain. You're greater than the circumstance. Come on. From the depths of your belly, begin to open your mouth and begin to let release in the sanctuary today. Because today we're declaring freedom. Hallelujah. In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God, we ask you to have your way in this place. Hallelujah. Pour out on the man of God today. In the name of Jesus, give him insight and revelation to the people that he's ministering to today. We're declaring everybody's walking out free. Come on, somebody. Open your mouth and begin to declare, my, I'm free. Hallelujah. Because who the Son says free is free indeed. We plead the blood over of Jesus over everyone under the sound of my voice. We declare this place has been blood washed. Hallelujah. I'm bought with a price. I'm not even my own anymore. I surrender today. I yield today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God, we give you glory because you're worthy. We give you glory because you are who you are. You give you glory because you always keep your word. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. Come on, can you just tell them thank you this morning? Come on, tell them thank you. We've been through all week, all month, some all year, some all COVID. Hallelujah. But we're declaring there's a change today. Tabernacle with us today. Tabernacle with us today. We want to be with you. We're declaring we're moving closer to the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Have your way in me and through me. It's all about you today. Forgive me when I made it about me, but today I make it about you. Here we give you glory. Here we give you glory. We give you glory. God, I'm just grateful. Come on. I'm just grateful. Somebody didn't wake up. Somebody didn't make it. Somebody transitioned. God, I'm grateful that I still got time to finish my assignment. I'm grateful that I still got an opportunity to move closer to you. I'm grateful. God, that I can be where you are. I'm grateful. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I need you. I desire you. My hope is in you. Have your way. And we declare deliverance in the house today. In the name of Jesus. Now some of you have children and people you know that's connected to you that need help. Come on, I just want you to put their names in the atmosphere. I call out my children, uh, Autumn Austin and Ariel, AJ, Ashley and Ayana. Put, your, put their names in the atmosphere and we're declaring that the same presence that's here going to visit them where they are in the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory. Do it, God, because you're the only one that can do it. Heal me, God, because you're the only one that can heal me. Move through me, God, because you're the only one that can change me. We need you. We're in the hands of Dr. Jones. Hallelujah. Can you be seated? Hallelujah. Powerful prayer.
brother to say amen and going home now, baby. <laughs> so, um, I like to read this prayer, do this prayer. How many of you? How many have your Bibles with you? If you have your Bibles, listen to home. Or all your phones. Ephesians one. And one of one of the um, one of the themes for this message is light. And so uh, this is a this is a prayer Paul is praying to the church. Some of his prayers really get long, but this this is so it's just got so it's got so much in it. So this is Ephesians one, and I'm going to start with uh, verse sixteen. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Verse seventeen, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom yeah. and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? Now this this will preach right here, so you can just. But I'm just, I just wanted to just highlight a few things here, in other translations. Um, the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of, of Him. See, so what, what do we say? Knowledge means yesterday. Intimacy. Knowledge means to know. And so when the Bible says no, he, in fact, one, one, the, the, like the, some people say the worst scripture in the Bible is where God says, "I never." Knew. Never knew you. Yeah. They said, but now, didn't we cast out devils? Look, I never knew you. We were never intimate. See, so knowing is huge in the Bible. See, so when you see that word, you got to, whoa, whoa, whoa you know, this, this is, we've gone to another level here. See, so we want to know him. Yeah. See, so he's saying, okay, I pray that, the, that now this is the prayer. He's praying that we get this. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. In knowing, so it takes wisdom and revelation to know. See, so see, it's going to take wisdom. The rev see, we know what wisdom. Wisdom, and one of the wonder words for wisdom is to know the details of what, and it's, it's know how to apply truth, to understand truth. Revelation means that there's 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 a there's a mystery that is opened. Mm -hmm. See, one of, one of the problems that the Jews have is that they don't have a revelation. So there's a veil between. The soul and the spirit. There's the, what, the veil of the holy and the holy of holies. And see, this veil has to be open when it's like, whoa! When the, when this veil is open, it's like, whoa! Now we can know him. But it takes revelation to open that. I like in Psalm 20, the 23rd Psalm. It says, yay. See, a lot of people go past the yay. But he's saying, oh, isn't he wonderful? Isn't God great? Then he says, you. He goes from talking, he's, he's like a praise leader. Isn't he great? Isn't he wonderful? Now he's talking to God. He was talking about God. He was praising. Now he gets into worship. Oh, yay! The first thing he says is yay. And everything after that is personal. Yeah. It's intimate. Oh it's one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Okay, so see, don't miss that. See, there's a difference between praise and worship. Yes. There's a difference between our yes. court and holy of holies. See, now yes. it's like, whoa, yeah. oh my yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Here he is. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about this knowing. Okay, so, but it takes something to get into that place. It takes wisdom and revelation mm -hmm. in knowing. Okay, what's going to happen when you know him? This is verse 18. The eyes of your understanding are going to be enlightened. Now, I like one translation. This is the NLT, the New Lay of Living Translation. Do you guys pull that up on your phone? You pull, you pull up this uh, word, this, this app, and so... You can just, you, I put different things in. Just, oh, this is awesome. Anyway, let me just, so, so listen. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. The New Living, NLT says, that your heart will be flooded with light. Yeah. That your heart will be flooded with the light. So we talked about, we're going through all this stuff to clear out our hearts from all kind of junk. So we, he's praying that your whole heart will be flooded with this light. And so it just drives out the darkness. It drives out the pain and confusion. Yeah. And see, our heart actually represents everything that was going on from conception mm -hmm. till now, that your heart will be flooded with light. And then there's three things. Three things will happen 
and I'm not going to get into all those, but though, see, I, I like mnemonics. You learn mnemonics like memory devices, because there's so much to learn, especially in medical school. Your purpose, your preciousness, and your power. That's one of the three things he mentions right there. I'm not going to get into that, but your purpose. See, like we talked about yesterday, people struggle with their purpose. They don't know who they are. What are you doing on this earth? What's your purpose? What's your calling? On their deathbed. That's called existential despair, never knowing who they are. Your purpose, your precious. You know how precious you are to God. That's one of the things we're going to talk about today, how precious you are. And then power. God, God wants us to have power. That's another thing I really want to bring out today is power. Okay, so there, that's that really. So this prayer, this Ephesians one, really is is a powerful prayer. But I think one of one of the keys I want to bring out today is being flooded. Your heart being flooded with light. Just close your eyes, just a minute. Imagine your heart being flooded with light. They turn on the light. Now a lot of times when the light comes on, you know the bats want to leave and the mosquitoes want to leave. They just want to. Whoa, 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 what is this? Wait a minute. So there's parts of us that don't like the light. Well, you got to go. We want the light, the healing light, the delivering light. Let the light shine in our hearts, Lord. Oh, let the light shine. The light of your love. The light of your calling, your purpose. The shine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The delivering light. So everything that can't deal with the light, the lies, the curses, the judgments, we bind and break your power in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and I. For we're seated in heavenly places in Christ, far above principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high place, every name that is named. We break and bind your power and command you to loose and let go of the light. You can't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that light. That's a healing light. Now, Lord, fill us up with your light from head to toe. Fill our hearts in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? Amen. Okay, so I'm going to sort of... Start where I left out here um, yesterday. And so, how to receive healing love. I'm going to go with this quickly because we're going to come back to this. Soaking. We talked about how you can get into the presence of God. Like people would go to Toronto and they would get into the presence of God. And just like the other child, just soak. Just in the presence. They'd be there on the ground. Get up on, they get up, up on the ground, they can be back on the ground soaking, and they're receiving, like a little child, receiving healing. Okay, and, and a lot of times they're not praying. They may be praying in tongues, but they just are just soaking in the light of the light of Jesus. The light of the Holy Spirit is lining up their spirit, spirit to spirit. So it's just, you know, the brain doesn't have to be involved. It's like praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, your mind is unfruitful. It ain't for you. The Holy, this is the Holy Ghost in your spirit. This is the two spirits are praying, connecting, 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 connecting. And so what's happening? You're getting healed. You're getting set free. You're getting revelation. That's what, that's what soaking is about, the soaking prayer. Okay, so be still and know that I'm God. So what, you guys, you probably, let me know that scripture. Be still and know, let me see your right hands, raise your hands. Be still and know that I'm God. Okay, the majority of people know that. That's huge. But what does be still mean to your mind? Hush. You know what hush up? Okay, let's try it. Let's try. Let's start with that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I've been in Buffalo a long time. I know y'all know what hush up is. Yes. <laughs> I'm in Georgia. They really know what hush. Hush. <laughs> hush. Mind, will you hush up? Thank you very much for all your thoughts. But right now, I just want to be be still because I want to hear the Holy Ghost. Yeah. yeah. I want to hear what Jesus has got to say. Mm -hmm. See, so that's really important when you receive. You're downloading. See, we 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 talked we talked we, uh, yesterday. We talked about uh, listening to God, hearing God. There's a conference coming up on how to hear God's voice. See, that's one of the keys. Be still and know that I'm God. We're back to know. You want this intimacy? You want this knowing? Well, you got to hush up your mind. Because yeah. the mind is like, well, I think, well, I think, well, I don't like his tie, and I don't like his shirt, and what's he doing? What he doing? <laughs> now, hush. Thank you very much. We can talk to you later. What do you say? We have like 7,000 7, thoughts a day, 70,000 thoughts a day? Some people got seven. That's all they got. It's the same one. It's, just, it's a broken record. But so whatever, whatever, you got to go. Listen, I wanna, I wanna be still so I can hear the Holy Spirit. Okay, that, that's 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 you. And lead this still small voice because a lot of times it's very subtle. That voice is so subtle. I was praying, praying yesterday, and said, "It's like, like, Lord, what do you want to talk about? We're going to come back." And he's like, "Light. I want you to talk to them about light, enlightenment." 
It just blows away darkness. It blows away sickness. It blows away poverty. It blows away lack because the light comes on. And focus. So you're so now you're thinking about, okay, Jesus, what are you going to say to me? In meditation, we're going to talk about that. Casting down being imaginary, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so this is what we're going to talk about today. That's some of this. Okay. How many, how many of you meditate? So, so, so let me so let me try this. How many of you? How many of you know that you meditate? You meditate on purpose. Let me try that. Yes. Yeah. You, you guys should, should follow me on Facebook because I have a, this thing on. What's the name? Um, uh, he says it like fifty times. What was it? What is it, Tricia? It says uh, a happy day, a happy day, happy day. You know how many you know? Song, uh, it's gonna be a happy day, happy day. Yeah. What's his name? Bill Withers. Bill Withers. He says that 85 times on a three-minute record. How, somebody, you guys know that song? Yes. Somebody, somebody, give me a little tune. Hit it, hit that for me. Where my sound is. What, well, lovely day? Lovely. Yes. Day. Lovely, day. Oh, lovely, day. Oh, lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Sing it. Let's sing it. Sing it. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely okay. Day. okay. Right. Right. See, now, you know, actually, he says that 85 times on a three-minute record. That's called meditation. That's why it's so, you know, in fact, you go on YouTube, it's like, so, it's like millions of people listen to that. Mm -hmm. They listen to the more because it's like, they're programmed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a lovely day. Yeah. How do you know? Because I'm programmed to believe that. That's why they put all this stuff on the news about bad news, bad news, bad news. It's a meditation. I said, well, how many of y'all meditate? Y'all been, been watching it. Oh, bad news, bad news, bad news. They're programming us to believe what they want us to believe. They know how to program. Oh, we, we, know, how to, we know how to control, manipulate. We know how to send out demons. We know how to do that. See, we want to learn how to program stuff that's healthy, healing, prosperous. See, but that's what the Bible is huge on meditation. It's a how to download stuff. Okay, so, okay, let's, let's take this one. Let's, let's meditate. Now, how, how many of you know the Lord's Prayer? Mm -hmm. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Well, let's meditate on the first two words there. Okay, Jesus, is, they, the disciples asked Jesus how to pray. First word, the first word he uses is our. Our. Why did he say mine? Listen, I'm praying. Can I pray about my stuff? Yeah. Why well, gotta go over and talk about your stuff? <laughs> now, anybody still studying you? I'm not talking about me. Uh, oh, help me! No, he said no. Start out with I. Start out with our. Yes. What's yes. up with this? So look, I want you to talk about our. Okay, that's the first word. So we we just meditated a minute on the word our. Then the next word is the word what? Father. 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 He didn't call him God. Jesus got crucified because he said God was his father. He said, like, no, the Jews are like, wait a minute. Because you know, if God is your father, what does that make you? You're a son. You're a child. You're a daughter. That means you're in the same family, the same royalty, the same power, the same anointing, the same substance as God. You got to go. Because you ain't like us. That's huge. So see, right now I'm just meditating on the word father. Yes. So I'm meditating openly. See, so when you say our father, that's huge. Other religions don't say that God is the No, God is the one you need to do this. this, this. Other religions don't even try to go there. Jesus went right up front. Call God father. He's your daddy. Yes. He's your Abba. He's the one who will take care of you. Yes. See, so you can just meditate on that, right? You just, oh my God, you're my father. You're my daddy. You're the dad. I heard this one preacher said, though, you shouldn't call God daddy. What? Now, see, well, I was like, wait a minute. My inner child, my two-year-old, don't know about all this other stuff, but he can say, Daddy, Abba. Abba means Daddy. It's a little child. Oh, Daddy, I love you. My inner child needs Jesus. My two-year-old, my five, my 15-year-old definitely needs some help. <laughs> I was telling my wife this morning, my, you know, my 15-year-old, my, my, my 16-year-old really likes, they like my wife more than me. So, see, really. Because I, I met her when I was, um, I want to get into that, but, but, but anyway, there's a part of me 
There's different parts of me. I showed you the picture. There's different parts of like the multiple personality. There's, there, we have these different parts. Yes. See, they need to know daddy. Yes. See, I can say, well, the, this, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But what is the part about me? Like, well, I'm, I'm lost and I'm done and without God or a son. Well, what about you? You, you need to know a daddy too. Jesus wants to fill our heart. See, that's what the light is, that your light, your heart be filled with light, enlightenment, not just light over here and darkness over here. Now, so notice that we are med meditating on this one word. I just meditate on that one word, Father. You see, we didn't go through the whole prayer. So I said, blah, 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 amen. No, we want to stop and say, wait a minute. So you're my dad? And he's like, yeah, I'm your dad. What you want, child? What, what, do you, what do you need? What's going on? What's, going on? what's, what's happening here? Okay, so that's what meditation is about. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But I just want you to see how powerful. See, we wouldn't be meditating all the time. You guys have favorite television shows, your very favorite, favorite thing. And so you're meditating on that. They show the same little, little songs and all these other things. And so it's a meditation. You're, one of the words for meditation is to eat. Mm -hmm. Or the cow chews the cut. He chews it. He swallows it. Brings it back up. He regurgitates it and chews it some more. Mm, okay, I'm getting, okay, I'm getting this stuff out. Okay, I'm starting to get this now. He swallows it and brings it back up again. That's one of the words in the Old Testament for meditation. Another word the medi for meditation is to say it softly to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You see them at the wailing wall. They're going like this. Now, this bouncing actually causes, it's like being in the mother's womb. Okay, so when you're bouncing like that, that causes your brain to relax so like right in the baby. And in fact, even, even in the mother's womb, the mom is not unless like going like mom, mom's walking around doing stuff. The baby's moving around, the baby just getting rocked, and the baby like, this is a nice place here. A lot of babies don't want to come out. Uh, you know, amen, but see, amen. See, see, that's still true. So the, so in other words, the baby is being the baby is being rocked. Okay, so that's what med so they're meditating and they're actually saying the same verse, the same thing over and over again. Because they want to get it down in their heart. Just like this one on light. I want to be filled with light. Light. So they're, filled, they're meditating on what the Holy Spirit gave them. You yeah. see, now that gets brighter. It gets brighter. It gets brighter. Meditation. Okay, so I got what is Bible meditation? Contemplation, rumination, worry. Worry is a type of meditation. Anxiety is a type of meditation. Depression is a type of meditation. <laughs> okay, so um, how many have you got the handout yesterday? Uh, well, before we go into the handout, yes. So the handout, before I do that, any, any questions on meditation? Because meditation, I, I, if you really are taking notes, Joshua 1.8 uh, Joshua 1 8. I told you, I, told you, I went to a conference uh, years ago, one of the Fayetteville, and it was an all day conference on that one verse the seven steps to prosperity and success. You want to be prosperous? You want to be successful in life? Here are eight steps. And they're basically on meditation, on what you're meditating on. I'm like, oh my God, this is like. <laughs> so, any, any questions about meditation? Y'all really think you, you got that down? Please. <laughs> come on, hey, come on, give me. I know it's early in the morning. It's just, you got your coffee didn't kick in yet or what? Give me, what, what, is, give me, what, is, what? What does meditation mean to you? Before I came up here, what does meditation mean? There's a, there's a mic right there. I'm meditating on the Our Father. Greg Anderson okay. um, wrote a book called The Our Father and Cancer. And when I had breast cancer, I had read that book. And when I would go for my um, chemo, or my, not my chemo, my radiation, I would lay there and meditate on the Our Father. And it was so phenomenal. I used to look forward to crossing the street from work and meditating on the And that's where I learned Praise that God. our Father in is that establishes our relationship with him. And it's our we're all brothers yes. 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 and because of him and then I'd meditate and at the end say so I am 
safe. Oh, I am loved. Yes. 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 And I have nothing to fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. put a little spin on the um, uh, hell will be thy name. Because he said that when he looked it up, he found that oh, it, the root word was whole and healing. And so he would meditate whole and healing yes. is your name. Yes. 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 It's getting more and more. So more and more of the word of God and less and less of your program and, and less and less of your cancer. He's driving the cancer out. I was going to say that there are scriptures on healing that as you meditate on the scriptures on healing and health, it, 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 your whole body's like, oh, this is the new company policy. This is what we're supposed to be like. And see, so your body starts walking in that direction of health and healing. I say with prosperity. Well, so look, there, there, there's stuff. Eight thousand promises in here. Which ones are you? Have you chosen to meditate on? Eight thousand. Go. We're about to have a testimony service. Now. <laughs> yeah. and I, I'm impressed upon to say this when she spoke about cancer. My husband passed away with cancer six years ago. They gave him six months, doctor, and we meditated on Cindy Trim's prayer. All day, every day, every appointment. And let me tell you something. When God took my husband, my husband had peace. And I had peace that surpasses my own understanding. And when he transitioned, I jumped up from his bed, doctor. I said, oh, my God, husband, God has made you young again. He had the glory of God on him. Hallelujah. I have to share that. Praise God. Share Hallelujah. That. God is good. Yes, God is good. So, you know, um, we all have to transition. We all have to leave. And um, some people say, oh, you have to be sick to die. No, you don't have to be sick. You can just close your eyes like Moses. Just close your eyes. And, okay, I'm over here now. <laughs> okay, so so meditation is huge. So one of the things I'm looking is homework. Because I like to give out homework. I'm big on homework. Is What are you going to meditate on? this week. Okay, we're moving into spring, we're moving into a new time. Think about the thing thing or things you want to meditate, the subject you want to meditate on, the scripture you want to meditate on, and the things that you want that are going to um, take you, what, where are you, what are your goals? Do you guys, do you guys, do you guys journal, you put, if you have a calendar, you write down, oh, these are the things I want to accomplish this spring. These are the things I'm looking for. Okay, what, what are those things? So you're going to meditate on that. And so you look, you look, and so you're asking, in fact, if you don't know, we, we, hey, Lord, give us that light. Enlighten us on what we need to meditate on. Yeah. And so as you do that, you're going to find that it's like you're eating that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take all the vitamin C you want, but if you need vitamin D, yeah. Yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah. And you know, yeah. black folks need more vitamin D. Yes. That's right. yes. You know about that. Yes. In fact, the darker your skin, the more vitamin D you need. Mm. And in living in Buffalo, but we moved to we moved to Atlanta, and guess what? There's a lot more sunshine out there. Yeah. It's a sunny day, but you what we need if you're not going to get some sunshine in the winter time. That's what that's a big part of winter blues. I'm not going to the subject of that, but see, the winter is a time where the sun goes away, yeah. and so does the people get depressed because they don't have the they don't have the vitamin D. Yes. And vitamin D is like a hormone. I mean, it's My huge. Gosh. I mean, vitamin D. You want to prevent cancer? Get some. Get some vitamin D. Whether you're gonna get sunshine, whether you're gonna take it. And so I put my patients on. Listen, here comes the fall, beginning of fall. Put them on vitamin D until till the sunshine comes out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So the, right now, because you're gonna get less depression, you're gonna get less cancer, you're gonna have less Amen. problems because now I'm not meditating on vitamin D, but just if we want in light. Yeah. So what are you gonna? It's almost like what are you gonna choose to eat this spring? I recommend some good stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that is um, meditation. We meditate on worry. Rhema. We talk about rhema. What's the difference between the word of God and the rhema of God? Both mean word. I mentioned that yesterday. The rhema. The rhema of God. 
Rhema. What's the difference? I mean, you said the Bible is like the Logos, right? What's that now? You said the Bible is the word is the Logos. Logos, but Logos then, uh, right? Logos, yeah, man. And then um, the Rhema is in there, a uh, word that's a revelation to you. Okay, right. So, so, so the word, the Rhema is that word that's like, bam, the light comes on. Just like this word, Father. Okay, that word Father, well, that's we read that scripture. Our Father, word in heaven, blah, 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 Amen. In fact, actually, a few verses just before that, and Luke said, don't, don't go like that. It's not like blah, 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 amen. Okay, did good. It's not to be read like that. See, so you could, that's, that's like the logos, all the words. The rhema is, call me daddy. Let's meditate that I'm your father. Not like father that you had, but I'm a heavenly father. I'm the father that really wants to show up and show off. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm a father that I'm going to bless you, bless your socks off. And so all the stuff in your life, all the stuff in our life so far is because we have not really known what this father is like. Okay, I, I want to show you how to be a prince. I'm a king. I want you to be a prince or a princess. That's the kind of father I'm. See, so I'm, I'm just meditating on the word father. That's rhema. See, so we took the word father and now we are... It's like we're shining the light on. This is what that means. It's almost like you had a, somebody gave you a bank account and, and you're a little kid and says, oh, it says you gave a gift for a Christmas present to a kid and says, oh, you have a, um, your, your father left you a million dollars. The kid is like, oh, that's a nice paper. Look, it's got nice colors on that. You know, look at that. They don't know what that means. They're ready, they ready to go throw that away. They don't understand the rhema of that word. That's another level. See, so in other words, in order to get that rhema, you have to eat the rhema. Yeah. You have to meditate on the rhema. You got to get that inside. We want to get the best stuff inside. Yeah. We want to get the stuff that's going to change us. Yeah. That's going, the light is going to come on. Yeah. And that's not going to come on automatically. Yeah. But just, just like uh, uh, this conference on hearing how to hear God's voice. So that's what we want. We want to hear that. Then we want to eat it. Okay. So now, now we're going after this now. Now we want this to be inside of us, whether it's healing whether it's finances, whether it's for your kids, what are the scriptures that you're meditating on for your children? Hello, somebody. There's scriptures for your children, for them to be prosperous, healthy, so forth, for them to be saved. And those are you want to have those down. So if somebody says, you know, we want you to come speak at the church on, 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 on the best scriptures for children. You're like, I don't know no scriptures on children. How many children? I got 10 children. <laughs> Well, you pray, how do you pray for him? I just said, Lord, help him because I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm not saying is wrong about that prayer, but sometimes we need to go a little deeper. Let me, let me move on because I don't want to. So, anyway, so Rama is huge. Those are the seeds we want to plant in our heart. Because think about all the thousands of things that happen to us every day that we see. How many of them are like, that's what I want, and that's what I want to plant in my heart. That's what I want. That's where I want the. You know, Jesus spent a lot of time talking about planting and prosperity. Okay, the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places. This is also in Ephesians. And so the, the, the church at Ephesus, God had, this church was a little deeper than some of the other churches. So he went and told them some things that the other churches didn't know about. But one of them is we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is actually Ephesians uh, 2. Verse 6. And raised up to sit together. Yeah. And made us um, and raised us up together and to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now see so you can read that verse. This is Ephesians 2 6. And raised us up to sit together in, in, in heavenly places. Listen. He's talking about that you are seated yes. in heavenly places mm -hmm. in Christ yeah. right now. Yes. Yeah. So even though you're seated here in the church, you're actually seated in heaven. But now you have to meditate on it because that's kind of that would not really that your, your, your natural mind your natural uh, inclination is to say I'm here but God is like no you're seated up here with me now and you're looking down at the second heaven and the third first heaven this I will guide you with my eyes I, I will let you see what I see that's what he's saying there are you kidding me that's what we have that's what that's where the light comes on and so when you're doing spiritual warfare, especially when you're doing spiritual warfare, you want to be seated far above. You're sitting yeah. above the devil. Yeah. You're above the demons. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to show you what's going on down here in the battlefield. And I was like, whoa, my God, what is going on? See, that, that's on earth looking up 
at the, the heavens. Yeah, well, that's that's one position. But he's like, look, I'm going to guide you with mine. This is what I see from my perspective. Yes. This is where power is. So when you're doing spiritual warfare, casting demons out, when you are praying for the, praying for the sick, you want to be seated, seated in heavenly places in Christ, far above. So when you're looking down, Lord, you guide me with your eyes. What do you see over the body of the person dealing with cancer? What, what do you see? Not what I see or what the doctor sees. That's, those things are nice. But what do you see? Let me pray from your power and perspective. Okay, now he just threw that in there. But see, that's huge. You see, so with Dr. Ico, now you guys know Dr. Ico is, is uh, 94. So in fact, she's not really doing very well. But um, we're, we're, get, we're getting her to have a comeback. She's going to have a comeback. But anyway, that's one of her prayers. That's one of the things that she, not, not just, actually, she's one of the people that talks about that. So anyway, uh, we want to pray and renounce strongholds. How many of you have, did you guys have your handout from yesterday? Uh, look at that handout. In fact, you had a little homework. I'm, I'm big on homework. <clears throat> and one of the homework assignments was to go over this list. Everybody had this homework assignment? You guys got that? Everybody has that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's non-spiritual, uh, non-Christian non spiritual experience. You guys fill that out? I'm not getting a lot of amens here. This is, I know it's kind of ugly. It's kind of scary. It's kind of, it's like, listen, this is really bad. But we want to let the enemy know, uh, we want to give him a, 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 a bill of divorcement. Amen. You can't touch me. Don't come in here with yeah. that. Okay, so by just doing that, you see, you're going to get a lot of cleansing right now. You get a lot of healing right now, especially if you do it from the heavenly perspective. We do top down. Okay. And so I wanted you to go over this, and um, I didn't have time to go. This whole conference is just on this right here, okay? And so if you don't know some of these things, look them up, look them up from a Christian perspective, because someone will be like, oh, this is good for you. <laughs> no, it ain't. <laughs> this, is the, this is different names of the devil, okay? These are different names of the devil. So we want to just give them a bill of divorcement, and see, by doing that, I'm not going to go over the whole list. But um, in fact, when you go over it, you want to also look at what's going on in your family. Okay, what's going on with your kids or whatever. And so um, it's like when you, like I said, when you go into a new house, you, you are pleading the blood over the house. You're taking authority over everything in that house. You don't know, you don't know what was going on in this house. You, you don't know what's going on in the land before they built the house. That's still affecting. That's it. That's it. Okay, so, so if you'd like to, I know I'll lead you in the prayer, and we're just going to break these. Um, we're going to announce and renounce. We're going to renounce these. So, heavenly, so say, Heavenly Father, heavenly Father in, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're my Father. I thank you that you're my Father. And I'm, and I'm your dear child. And I'm your dear child. And I know you don't want me contaminated. I know you don't want me contaminated. With confusion. With and so I thank you, so I thank you that, that I'm seated together in heavenly places in, in Christ Jesus, far above, far above principalities and powers, principalities and, powers and, rulers and rulers of darkness in the spiritual realms. In the spiritual realms. And so I thank you, so I thank you for, the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus, which is above every name. Which is above every name. And so in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I want to thank you for this name, and I want to take authority over those things that may have had an attachment over me. Just stop right there. That even may have had attachment may have over me or my and my family. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Now the things that you I'm not going to go through this whole list, but right now you know what you checked off. You go ahead and you can say that you can say that softly. Go go ahead and go down your list and say, "I renounce." I renounce. And you go ahead and say the name of it. Go through the whole list. If you're not sure, throw the name in there anyway.
Now, if you only got two or three on the list, then you need some, you need some help. <laughs> you need to know there's a bunch more stuff out there. Now, let me go over the word necromancy. Okay. Now, if you keep going, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, uh, uh, if you're not finished, necromancy means basically talking to the dead. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Oh, but it's my mother. I know she shows up every on Mother's Day, and here she comes and talks to me, and I we have a nice relationship, honey. Please, uh -huh. you got to be careful with that, yes, because yes, the spirit yes. will try to say, you know, I'm your mother. I look like your mother. I sound yeah, like your yeah, mother, yeah, and I yeah, and I yeah. want to have a relationship yeah. with you, and I know you miss your mother, and so I'm here for you. Yeah. How many how many people I see in my office like that? Mm. Well, you coming? Why are you coming to me? Because I can't sleep at night on Mother's Day. Why? Because your mother shows up? I'm like, you know, hold it. Is that your mother? Let's say if you, if you, if you, now you got to go. If you're a spirit, you got to go. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I've been your mother for such a long time. Listen. So y'all so looking at me like, this is serious, thing. That's on the list. That's what 50, 11 things. Listen. We see the thing is we want to be like cleansed from this stuff. Yeah, yeah, Who needs yeah. this? I mean, see, it's like we want to go. We we ain't getting they get in the deep stuff of the day. It's like I'm pulling you back with this. I got I got this on you. I got dibs on you. So if you ain't show, because if it really, if God really see, it's, it is possible that your mother can talk to you, but ordinarily, the Bible says they're they're in heavenly places. Yeah. They're in heaven looking down, and they are praying for us. Yes. Now, they just can't come over here and say, oh, it was happening with you, honey. We're doing good. How are you doing? You want to be? Wait a minute. Hold, hold it. The blood, of the blood of Jesus. Let me just talk about the blood. Let me talk about the blood of Jesus. Let me talk about the name of Jesus, because I, I, you know, I'm not sure about you. You might look like my mother. You might sound like my mother. Gonna listen, I ain't got time for nobody like masquerading like my mother. Yes. Yes. Please. Yes. Now, I know y'all looking at me like, this brother, I don't know, you don't mess with my mother. <laughs> I'm sorry if I mess with you. I'm not saying your mother was all of that. I'm not telling you your mother was a witch. I'm just talking about the one that's coming in your bedroom and saying that she's she trying to help. So, so anyway, if that's on the list, just, just put it on the list anyway. Because if it's not, if it's not, then it's your real mother, then look, go talk to your pastor. That's a good thing. Go sit down and talk to him. You know, I think my mother is coming. Go look up necromancy. Yeah, what is it? Take authority of these That's things. Right. See, just say, look, Lord, I just renounce these oh, things. Right. I take authority. I don't want anything in my life that's not of God, of the Holy Ghost. That's, right. that's what we want to clean out for. So now, are, have you guys finished this list? Amen. See, some of y'all went over this so fast, it makes me think, they don't really know. They don't know what some of these things are. Okay, so I really have time to go over all that. But see, I think... When you're going over this while hearing God's voice, let, let me finish the sentence. First. So when I finish, when you when you you're hearing God's voice, when you go over this list, just say that name. Some some ministries spend several days on this, mm -hmm. and you just go over the Lord. Is that with me? Is that part of me? And you just wait and see, because some of these things are not really about you; they're about your family. Mm -hmm. Your family, maybe they've been in it for, for generations, and now you come along and they, they didn't say anything. Can that affect you, what was going on with your grandfather? Yes. Can it go on when your, your, your great-grandfather was in slavery? Yes. And they may have said some things about slave owners and cursed them, which actually some of them were their fathers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Wow. So they're cursing them. Yep. And so does that curse come on you? Yeah. 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 Hello, somebody. See, yeah. so we want to be cleansed. We don't want to listen. I got enough issues on today when okay. I'm carrying a bunch of stuff from last week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last year. So anyway, so, so I think that um, I think we're going to do. So actually, we're going to do the two sisters now. So um, we can take we can before we do the two sisters, we can we can to do quite a quick Q&A on this. Now, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this because, uh, you know, I got a lot of other stuff for you. But, so, if you got, anybody has a question, comment, please. I, I, okay. I'm going to be here. And um, I am, I'm very inquisitive mm -hmm. because I'm forever evolving. Okay. But my question is, when you were speaking about um, uh, spirits coming and I've seen, I've had this experience with family 
where they're transitioning and their mother, they say that they see their mother coming to get them. So I wanted you to kind of touch on that or, or just a loved one coming to get them. If you could kind of touch okay, on that. Okay, so, so, so when a person dies, it's very common for their spirit to be around for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in fact, it, it, in um, Ecclesiastes, it talks about a silver cord. Mm -hmm. yep. you ever been over the silver cord? There's a silver cord mm -hmm. between you. And see, yeah. see, everything that you find in, in God, yep. in the holy, the enemy got some unholy yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So he got some stuff too. Oh, we can, we can, we can travel. What do you call this? Some this the spirit traveling. We, we can go over here and, and and be doing stuff. Which we want to teach you how to go over here and and translate over here and and put curses on people and then can come back into your body over here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we know that's going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so now now this person who is supposed to be dead, their body's dead and their spirit is dead. Because you you hear people that are raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, so really, their their silver cord is still there. Their doctor's right. looking at you and say, your heart is stop beating, mm -hmm. and you yeah. clinically you're yeah. dead. Yeah. But if you look that up, there are thousands and tens of thousands of people that happen to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're they're in the ICU, they're in the hospital, and the doctor claims them dead and everything, and 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 then they and they shock them, they finally bring them back, and that person says, oh, thank you, and the doctor says, well, did we, you you were dead, and I say, no, because you you went out of the room and you had a hamburger over there, and I saw you over there, and you came back, you said, how do you know? Are you your eyes were closed, you know, because our spirit is sitting up there at the top of the ICU looking at you clowns down here, and you know what I mean? like, oh yeah, you doing that, you doing yeah, I saw all of that, because my spirit hadn't my head, my spirit hadn't left my body. That's why one of the reasons that that spirit can be called back into the body. Because some of the prayers, Dr. Eichel, and pray, that, that spirit can be brought back in and the person wakes up mm -hmm. from the dead. Because mm -hmm. they're not, they're, they're physically dead, but not spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. So the spirit is still, they, they still got this cord that hasn't been cut. Mm -hmm. So anyway, see, so that, that can be there for a few days. Okay. Almost like normally. So, they, so sometimes it can be that, and they're gone to heaven. And it's possible actually to be actually go to heaven and come back. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into too much, too deep stuff. But anyway, I've, I've had prayed people. I prayed for people that, that it would happen. Mm -hmm. You know, like what's the name of that movie? This little boy goes to heaven, and, and um, this little boy goes to heaven, and he goes and sees his he sees his his, his sister that was um, miscarried or whatever. And the, and the sister now is so in heaven. You grow up. Heaven is for real. Which is a good movie. I recommend you. And so he he sees this. He goes to because he, he he died and comes back and says, "Mom, what happened did, what, to what? You never told me about my sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you know about that? Yeah. That happened before you were born. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know about her. She's blah 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 blah. She looks like this and she's doing this. There, and the mother's like, what? Yeah. I said, I saw her in heaven. Yeah. This boy, we need to do it. We need to, we need to take. What what else did you see? <laughs> Who else did you see in heaven? So it's yeah. So it's actually possible to go to heaven. In fact, if you Google, if you go Google it, if you, go, if you you can look that up and you see people that have come back. Mm -hmm. Now that cord might be cut or whatever. I don't know all these things, but anyway, so it's possible to come back from heaven. It's possible to come back from hell. God sometimes let some people go and say, hey, "This is what's going on over there." Go back and tell the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, I didn't mean to get into all this, mm -hmm. but anyway. So I don't know if I answered your question or not. <laughs> But yes, see, yes, so 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 it's possible to um, for so, so it's possible to be physically dead and not spiritually. But so the thing is, if you sense somebody's talking to you from the dead, you're suspicious. Well, you wait a hold because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's necromancy. Look that up. Check that out. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of these things, if the Holy Spirit quickens you, check it out. Read about that. Because mm -hmm. I'm going over kind of fast, but this whole thing's on it. You really spend a lot of time on these because they know that people get stuck there. You know, all my family, I have some people in Christian science. I'm a Unitarian. Well, yeah, well, we don't believe in that. There's, there's a big Unitarian um, church over in Delaware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's, there's these things are real. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm doing. Listen, because I need to renounce that. I need to say, let me. So the spirit is like, I, I'm here. I'm home in your home. You're like, I don't know. You ain't here no more. See, they were like, oh, we're not welcome here. We can't, we can't come into your place anymore. No, you can't. And so they're like, well, I got, I got other places I can go. <laughs> I'm not welcome here. I can go someplace else. Need to let them know. Go. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we just thank you that you give us the anointing yeah. that of light. Yes. 
we want the light to shine the darkness so these so these unclean things will be recognized that they can't stay here in the name of Jesus. Any other comments about this? I know we could, like I said, we could stay on this for a while. It's quick. It's okay, quick. okay. I talk loud, so I don't need the mic. Okay. <laughs> when I'm looking at the list, something that came across my mind also, you might not recognize this stuff in your family by name, mm -hmm. but this stuff has a lot of sprouts okay. and tap roots and stuff right, like that. Right. <clears throat> and I, just a quick example, just like masonry, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you might not know it's in your family, but there might be strong things mm -hmm. of intimidation and control yes. that is attached to that. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm saying this is a fantastic list. Mm -hmm. Don't get thrown off by the names. Pray for the stuff that's attached to the names, too. Yes. That might be your family. That's good. Because, see, in a way, all of us got this stuff. Mm -hmm. All of us came from um, from our, our other father. <laughs> we got a heavenly father, but he got this other guy. Yeah. That's what his stuff is about. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to transition here into um, the two sisters. And so, any other questions, by the way, before we start? Okay, so this is... Um, Yes. Um, what is uh? Cause my family be talking about uh being an em empath. Um, an empath like yeah. taking on people's feelings and whatnot. Oh, being empathic. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that like a? Well, it it, it could be, but in in general, see, in, in, impact sort of means being sensitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, being being in some. In fact, that's a spiritual gift. Now, everything that is of God, see, Satan wants to have contaminated. Right. Okay, so some people are very compact. Compa Jesus is compassion. Yeah. A lot of his miracles were because of compassion. Because yeah. he's, he's sensitive. Mm. And see, so this sensitivity is actually a spiritual gift. Mm. And see, so um, we're going to talk about that a little bit. So in other words, it's possible, like I, I tease some people, there's something like you can pick up AM and FM and cable and satellite and you, 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 you can pick the old one. God, you see all this stuff coming in. See, so in fact, that that we, we're gonna come up on that prayer. Uh, uh, it's not on here, but it's um. So it's coming up. I mean, maybe it be whether whether it's later on today or uh, whatever. But so we, we're gonna spend a lot of time on that. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, one in, the back. in the back. Yes. Um. I wanted to ask about the yoga thing because I was at the gym and I don't know too much about yoga, but they, they were doing a class and I was in there, but at the end of it, they started doing some weird stuff. So I just collected my stuff and left, but I didn't have a strong knowledge of exactly what they were doing. So what is yoga? Meditation. They were meditating. Okay. Well, we just, we talked about meditation, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What are they meditating on? Who are they meditating to? Now that part I didn't know. You know, sometimes it may be good to go up to the yoga show and say, you know, because uh, a lot of times they don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They may be good Christians and, and deacon in the church, and they just like, we got a yoga class. Okay? And are you Christian or are you occult? Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm a Christian. Why are you doing occult stuff? Because a lot of times the yoga actually, low, yoga is another name for Hindu. Okay, so they're talking to a Hindu god. And see, the yoga positions and breathing, all of that's really good. Yeah. It's good for the body. But you could have somebody that is, and, and it could be like secular yoga. you got secular Christians. Okay? But the thing is, if they don't, wait a minute, are you going to bring your other God in here? You might just go talk to him and say, you know, do you know what you're doing? Are you doing that on purpose? Are you a Christian? I mean, are you, do you expect people to go and connect with this spirit and take that home to their family? Is, is that what you up to? And you you know go go ask them. I think I think they get, get get them saved. And if they're not saved, get them saved and sanctified. But you know get them to the place where you know this is occult. This is oh see occult means it's hidden. It's not going on. I'm the devil. And now, now nowadays that's that's occult. Yeah. But see ordinarily occult is like look. I don't want you to know that I'm here to screw you up and your family. Yes. I'm, I'm here to tear to tear tear y'all down. He never come out like that. Okay, so you're right. He's that, that. So you you're concerned about that. Should I drop this class? Christian say, look, I ain't going. I'm dropping this class. But the other thing is, you want to pray for this person and pray. Should I should I go or should I talk to this uh, instructor and say? In fact, you you can Google that. Is is yoga occultic? 
It is what do you do about that? Do you not go? Or are you going to be sitting under that where everybody is, everybody, wait a minute, we love you, devil, and we love you. Wait a minute, hold it. Don't touch that. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Don't touch that. Any other comments or questions? I mean, that's my best answer for you. Go ahead. No, I just want to tack on what you were saying about uh, yoga. I do, I was reading that certain positions, even that they stretch in, okay. is a form of worship. Oh, all of them are a form of yeah, worship. Yeah, okay. all of them, even the positions, the stretching positions and everything. Yes. Yeah. So what yes. You the meditation along with the certain positions of stretching and things like that is. And you know, so, you know, the, 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 the lotus position. You get in the night, I can't, I can't try to do that. But you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, you're in the lotus position. That's a type of prayer. Wow. But like, excuse me, but uh, who are you praying to? And what is he saying to you? <laughs> See, because, you, you know, there, there's one God and all these other idols out there. See, so you are, are, do you know who you're praying to and, and, what, and what he wants you for your eternity, what he wants for your children? Do you know what that's about? Oh, no, we're just trying to relax and stretch our muscles, and this is what we're trying to do. Right. But wait, let, let's look on the other side. What is this really about? Ask your instructors. I would, get, I would get a nice little letter and then ask them. Get them saved. Pray for them to get saved. They may, actually, they may be saved. Is that, that's another hand up there, or are you yeah, just saying hallelujah? Yoga, I agree that initially people come in with an innocent mindset. Yes, the innocent. It's more of a exercise, but not understanding the whole word behind it, spiritual aspects behind yeah. it that gets you, and then it entices you, and then you're already in. Yeah. So then that's the part that we have to think about in various areas of yeah. our lives is that yeah. it's an old work, it's getting you pulled in. And then after that happens, then you're stuck. Now you have to fight off those spirits or those strongholds or whatever else associated with it. Yes. So let's do the two sisters. I need I need two ladies to come up here who are very good at representing older teenagers. <laughs> Some of y'all laughing is oh see, here's a young teenager now. Thank you. Don't play with me. Don't play, don't play. Please stand up right up here. You turn around, and we have two teenagers, okay? Now, y'all are going to represent. I'm starting my <laughs> Okay, so now, y'all are holding hands. Holding hands. Okay, so now, and, and swing it just a little bit like you do. There's a lot of happiness here. Okay, so this represents two teenagers. No, I'm not a good teenager. Oh, wait a minute. You got, wait, you got to be a good teenager. We need a good oh, teenager. Gonna have to be, you got to be a good one. No, we need two good ones. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 We can't handle we, we, we can bring somebody that can try to do that. Okay. No, because, it, because it's going to get deep in a minute. So if you're, if you're already gone, it's not going to be. All right, I'm a good girl. <laughs> okay, so this represents two sisters. They are happy. They enjoy each other. They like each other. They grew up together. And so they're, 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 really, they're really biologic sisters. Now I need a young man. Oh. 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 Did you drop that on purpose? Okay, so now y'all are gonna hold hands. And so then you know what this represents. So now he got a girlfriend, she likes him, they like each other. Everything's cool and copacetic. Okay, then one day he gonna let her hand go. And he's going to come over to this sister. Mm -hmm. Oh. Come on over. Come on. I want to be here to begin. Okay, now y'all hold a hand. All right. Am I still supposed to be holding her hand? No, yeah, yeah. You can hold her hand for right now. Girl, okay, so the first, wait, now the first question, for the first question is, how do you think this sister is going to feel about this? Now, he broke up with her, and he came over here. What do you think that's going to feel? I deal with this all the time. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, we're not going to ask you yet. You're going to look like the girl. We don't, we don't want you to give, don't give them no information. Oh, don't, help don't help them. So how do you think she's going to feel about this? Betrayed. Bad. Betrayed. Rejected. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you could let her hand go now. Okay, so <laughs> the next question is, now I'm, I'm looking for an emotion. How do you think she feels? Sad. Angry. 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 Hurt. Hurt. Angry. Angry. Bitter. Bitter. Sad. Oh, sad. Sad. Okay, now step forward just a couple steps here. Now, 
this new happy couple here. Y'all, 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 y'all,
Yeah. And that was 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So that curse is on me. Yeah. That curse is messing me up. Yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. So when you're doing inner healing, that's where you're going. You go back there and you, you see this picture. Now, this was sort of nice. This stuff can be much worse than that. See, but the thing is, if you don't forgive, then you'll be turned over to the tormentors. Yep. One, one, one verse says, and you'll be tormented yeah. day and night until you forgive. Yeah. Yeah. That's when my patient comes to my office and say, Doctor, I'm tormented day and night. I'm like, who do you need to forgive? Right. There's some medical conditions that are that's mean you're tormented day and night. Fibromyalgia, chronic pain, cancer. I'm tormented day and night. So I'm like, okay, how do we get this person into forgiveness? So where where is the trauma that caused you to hate? That's what I'm looking at, because otherwise, I, we can, we can, oh, I'll get you on the right medication and all that. No, those are fine. But we're talking about healing. So we can't cast the demons out, because the demons are like, they like me here. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm welcome here, because they hate, and I'm a spirit of hate. Oh, I'm a spirit of murder. And I'm a spirit of, of suicide. And I'm a spirit of depression. We all boys, we all, have, we, we all, we all welcome here. And it's up in heaven, we hate you, hate them, you hate them. But but I'm I'm safe, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I go to church, and, and I am the pastor of the church. <laughs> I'm the pastor's wife. But you got this stuff over here. Yeah. Is that a question? The comment? You... Yeah. <laughs> what do you do when someone says they forgive you, but they don't really all the way forgive you? And how can you minister to them to let them know that they haven't truly forgiven? Okay, well, we're coming to that. That's a good question. Oh. And so we, so, because see, actually, so let, let's, let's just go with this right here. Okay. Because I'm supposed to stop pretty soon. <laughs> and um, uh, I didn't get down to this. So we, we can do this after this afternoon. But, so how do you forgive? See, so they're coming to you, and let's say you are the minister. You're the counselor. And they're saying to you, um, and sometimes they don't come and say, I got a hate problem. Mm -hmm. They may just say, I have an anger problem. Mm -hmm. They may just say I'm depressed, or they may they may say I'm suicidal. Mm -hmm. But let's see if you have a chance to go there. And sometimes it, I'm not talking about one thing, because after a while it becomes. And so, so actually, this kind of thing we're talking about is just a common thing for all of us. The thing is, when you're looking at inner healing and you're looking at healing trauma, you got to get that cleaned out. That, that unforgiveness has to be cleaned out. And see, so after the good news is, once you understand that, then you're trying to get stuff under the blood right away. Oh, that's got to go to one of the blood. That's got to get it. And so you're not really just, just well, I don't want to think about that. I don't, I don't want to go there. Because, see, that can cause chronic illness in your body. The body will break down. The body, the, 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 the mind will break down. The relationship will break down. And see, basically, all of us got this. All of us got... A sister that betrayed us, a person that betrayed us. Uh, we got friends that betrayed us. And so what do you do? So let me give you a prayer. I don't, I don't know if you have this prayer in the hand or not. Okay, so, so you might want to write down this prayer. <clears throat> Uh, this is this is really powerful. Now, see, ordinarily you're doing this in the memory. Let's say you went back to the memory the day your your sister started going out with your boyfriend, and that may have been. Now, I know most of y'all are not teenagers, I don't think. So we're going back to that day 20, 30 years ago, 30, whatever. And you go back to that day, and it's very painful. But we're going into the memory, and we're asking Jesus to heal that. Okay. So this is one of the prayers. Lord Jesus, be right back. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, the Christ in the Christ in me. So this is this is this is really I like this prayer because see there are a lot of different ways of doing forgiveness, but this is sort of accelerate. See, I, I, so we got I got so many patients to see. So many people are hurting. Look, we got to try to get you healed as fast as possible. Because <laughs> I got like my wife said, you got to wait. These people waiting in the waiting room. They're trying to get in here. <clears throat> trying to get them healed fast. So just tell me, okay. Well, so so now you got a whole group. Let's get the whole group healed. That's what I'm talking about. How you do it a whole group? Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus the Christ in me, please direct your forgiveness toward. 
Now notice we're letting Jesus do it for us. Please direct your forgiveness toward my sister for please direct your and so you would say what it is for betraying me for ripping me off for stealing my boyfriend whatever okay now the same thing that you and so you would go over there and so then you're sort of waiting on the Holy Spirit because a lot of times there will be like a quickening of, of, of a little peace will come okay and sometimes so you're waiting and also and also, sometimes the Holy Spirit will put some other things in there. That's why it's good to be able to listen to the Lord. The gifts of the Spirit are really helpful. Of, of the word of knowledge of just listening. Okay, so the same thing. Lord Jesus the Christ in me. You don't have to write it again. But Lord Jesus the Christ in me, please direct your forgiveness toward this boy. For, and maybe different things. For stealing, for ripping me off, for betraying me, for, for setting me up, for, you know, these things that he did against me. And so forgive me for, Lord Jesus, look, the, the Christ, please direct your forgiveness toward me for what? What are you asking God to forgive you for? Let's put hate. Yeah. See, I, I just want to see, because hate is a sin. Because mm -hmm. he didn't like me so much. No, that's, no that, ain't, that ain't no sin. You need to go to the, lay the ax to the root. Let's get to hate. Let's get to murder. Get, let, forgive me for wanting to kill him. Hello, so y'all looked at me like, I don't know, do I really want to kill you? Yes, at that moment, at that yeah. moment, it was like, yes, I hate you, I'm going to kill you. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. No, you put the curse out there. We want to get it under the blood. We want to get the worst yeah. things under the blood. Because a lot of people say, oh, I don't hate him like that anymore. But the hate is still there. Yeah. The sin is still there. Okay, so, wait, so you ain't going to get healed if you just put a Band-Aid on the cancer. You said, once, once, you, once, you put, once you say, Lord, forgive me that I hated him and wish he would die. Mm -hmm. Wish somebody would cheat on him. Wish, and so, and so, we, and so here, here's a child is saying those things against that person, against their parent, or whatever, and forgot about it. Now, we, we put up a nice little defense mechanism, defense mechanism called denial, yes. which is not a, a river in Egypt. Amen. <laughs> Denial is not a river. And it's like, oh, wait, now we got this over here. It's like, I, am, I ain't trying to go there. And so I ain't thinking about that. But my life is falling apart. Jesus said, you'd be turned over to the tormentors and you'd be tormented day and night until you forgive. That's Matthew 18, 18. May have to run in there. You'll be tormented. One translate, you'll be tormented day and night until you forgive. Are you tormented day and night? So somebody, oh, doctor, I'm tormented day and night. I'm thinking, Okay, who do you have? Who do you hate? Now I don't do ordinarily say that because I'm trying to be nice. I'm pretty sorry, but my wife said you need to be nicer to these patients. <laughs> <laughs> so really, that's why you got to think about it. Who do I hate? Right. You can write that down. Who do I hate and not and I have not forgiven? And see, so when we're talking about forgiveness, we're talking about all five different parts. Forgive me for hating them. I forgive them for what they did to me. And I forgive my sister. You can just put the names down because it's really the same thing. And forgive me for hating my sister and I forgive my sister for what she did to me. And Lord, I forgive you. I know you're holy and perfect, but you, was, you slipped off the throne there for a little while. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but forgive me for judging you and I forgive you for what happened. Now, I know you're holy and perfect, so you really don't need forgiveness, but I need to forgive you. Put the blood on my stuff because I've judged you as if you're not holy and perfect. I've taken you down and said, you know, you ain't no good. See, so put the blood on that also. Now, see, this accelerates healing. See, what I'm telling you really makes healing much faster. Okay? And sometimes it's like, okay, um, I got to forgive my mother because she didn't understand and she said, well, you know, your sister was, you know, she was more desperate, and you seem to get boyfriends, and, and so she was, she trying to clean it up, but I hated her for doing that. Yeah. So I forgive my mother, too. Mm -hmm. I, she, and listen, yes. I got to put the blood, you know, they put the blood on everything. Yes. They put the blood of Jesus on everything. Well, I'm, that, that looks like it's going to be all right. That's why I give you that list of stuff. Amen. A lot of you don't even know what that's in. You don't even know what that is. You don't know what they're running in your family. That's why you want to check that out. So I'll put the blood on that. So I'm putting forgiveness on everything. See, so when we do inner healing, healing happens fast. It's like the devil's the devil. So now we're not even casting the devil out. 
We're just saying, devil, you ain't, we, the blood of Jesus is against you. Yeah. See, so now when you've done that, the devil's like, well, demons, let's say different demons, they're like, I don't have any power anymore. Yeah. My power is that you hate it. Mm -hmm. you, you're not loving and you hate. So I'm, I'm a spirit of hate. I'm a spirit of murder. I'm a spirit of suicide. Yes. I, I'm, I'm these different demons are allowed to come in. And bring fix and bring infirmity. I'm a spirit of infirmity, and my assignment is cause problem in your physical body. A lot of things are physical in a physical body, but the root is the same stuff of unforgiveness. It's okay to preach that either way. Okay, so so this so this this two sisters thing. Hopefully, you see. Uh, and said, we, we want to demonstrate this. We want to do, we want to do, this, do this this afternoon. So when you see how this really operates uh, in a person's life, uh, and so you, you go back to the memories, and you're working on bringing uh, forgiveness to the traumatic things. In fact, that may be, um, we've got to close it a minute. So one of the things, uh, I hate to so, so put this on your lunch time, but to think about who you need to forgive. Whether it's your sister, your ex-boyfriend, and so I think we talked about soul ties mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. Y'all, y'all remember soul ties? Yes. Okay. So, so somebody tell me what a soul tie is. It's a it's an ungodly connection that you have with someone else because you judge them. Okay, you judge them. Now, now you know to judge them is not a sin per se. However, to condemn them. Because yeah. you could judge somebody and say, you know, you I judge you, you're the most fabulous thing in my life. I, I you, you're, you're really beautiful. I've judged you and you win the beauty contest of beauty. See, so judgment is not necessarily bad. But now con condemnation is a type of judgment that says you should be punished. You need, you need to go to hell for what happened. That's the kind of that's what I see. Look at it as hate. In fact, in in First John, I think it's around chapter three, it says that hating somebody and murder is the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See that's see so somebody really somebody really hurts you badly. A lot of times we're gonna say that. Like, and even the devil wants us to say that because I want you to hate them, because then that curse is gonna come back on you. What goes around comes around. Yeah. See, so now the devil's like, thank you. I can, I, I can torment you because you hate. Yeah. Now see, if the hate goes on and on and on, I can really got to bring more of my boys in. We can, have, we can really have a field, a house, a party. <laughs> but um, so, but, the, but so that's why it's best to just to be honest. Yes, Amen. I hated my sister. I hated her. Now we could be friends now. I, I could be friends with her. We just cope with setting. Everything is fine. But did you hate her before? Did she hate you before? Okay, that's what we want to get under the blood. See, so we ain't trying to be trying to be nice. We ain't trying to be just like this list here. Don't look at this list and say, "Well, we 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 don't believe in uh, um, casting spells on people anymore." <laughs> anymore. We 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 come from families who are putting curses on folks all over the place. But now I don't believe in that. But if you ask God to forgive them for their sin, that could come on you. No, we don't tend to do that. So, so, not, so not, but when you do inner healing or just healing in general, you're going to a place where this stuff is happening. It's like, it's like right there. It's a right there, right there word. So, any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. So, can you just tease out? You know, so like Matthew seven one talks about in the way that we judge others, that's how we're going to be judged. So, right. so I guess I didn't fully understand what you said that. Okay, well, Jesus, well, Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged. So a better word there is condemn. Judge not that you be not judged. Condemn not that you be not condemned. In the same manner that you judge them will come back on you again. Now, you could say, you know, you're fabulous, you're wonderful, you're great, I bless you, I judge that you're fabulous. That will come back on you again. A sowing and reaping. So you can sow a blessing, and the blessing will come back. But see, we're really not talking about blessing people today. Right. Too much. We're talking about... We judge them and we curse them. We're, we're on the judgment. You came before my court. I do, a, I do a thing on different judges and have different judges come up. And oh, you're a hanging judge. Or you got a parking ticket. 
off with his head. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you, you, you got, you're a corrupt judge. Well, you know, because the Bible talks about, oh, yeah, you, you can give me a bribe. I think it can help you. Okay, and we got we got all these different judges. And I have people come up, and then I have a person come out of the audience, and you got a problem, and you come before this judge. We have a merciful judge. Mm -hmm. we, we have um, we have a judge of um, we have a judge. Whatever, whatever comes, you know, if you if you if you if you uh, are, are going to bribe me, if you do the right thing, I'm going to let you go. So, and that, that's the Bible talks about all these kind of judges. Yeah. And so when we're talking, when somebody hurts us, we're one of those judges, and we could be like that are on our own on our, on our own stuff. Oh, I wish I had to. Oh, why did I do that? See, so I'm condemning myself. And so I'm not seeing this doctor over Oh, doctor, I got headaches. Well, why aren't you quite banging? Banging. Actually, people banging their head against the wall. You've heard of people banging their head? How many people have heard about people banging their head against the wall? Because, you know, see, some about half of y'all know about that. Listen, so um, why are you banging on something? There's a lot of different reasons why you're banging your litter. And so, literally banging your head, but whatever. And so, there's a judgment there. So, anyway, we want to put it under the blood. And so, so, um, in fact, this comes back to Elijah. <clears throat> um, let no root of bitterness, this is uh, Hebrews 12, 15. Let no root of bitterness spring up, yes. cause trouble, and by it many are defiled. See, so here's a, um, a root of bitterness. See, so I've judged this person, <clears throat> and so now I go through my life, and people are just condemning me. Why, why, am, why am I having this bad luck? It's not luck. So the devil is allowed to judge you, condemn you, and hurt you because you judge these people over there. See, so it comes back on you. What goes around comes around. So I get into place, and so I'm being, I'm being attacked because I've, re, I've renounced, I've rebuked somebody over here. See, so when, about the forgiveness then, I can say, Lord, please help this over here. But to see the Holy Spirit is like, let me, let me go back to where the, the root is. Okay, you judge, you condemn, you have a root of bitterness, a root of unforgiveness toward, <clears throat> and let's start with your mother. Let's start with your father. Yeah. Let's start early, let's start in the mother's womb. That's why we do inner healing. I'm going to go to the womb. What was going on in your mother's womb? She tried to, she tried to abort you. Is that child going to know about that? Well, his brain is not fully developed, but his spirit is there. Yeah. Your spirit knows. Your brain doesn't. Oh, well, you don't fully know. His, his spirit knows what was going on. That's why it's best to get stuck under the blood. Yeah. Let's just look. Listen, under the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Amen. It's just like it's like a, a giant eraser. Let's just let's get that out the way. So, so we're not even trying to say, was it this way or that way? Let's put under the blood. Lord, if if I judge my mother, let's just pray that right now. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, if I've made judgments against my mother or father, resentments, resentments condemnations, condemnations, even hatred, even hatred from, conception, from conception, any time in my life, in my life please, forgive me, please forgive me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus the Christ who is in me, please direct your forgiveness toward my mother. Toward my mother. And towards, my father, and towards my father, for anything they did against me, to hurt me, to mistreat me, to neglect me, to treat me in any way that wasn't healthy. Direct your forgiveness toward them. I pray that you would forgive them. And I agree with you that they're forgiven. And Lord Jesus the Christ in me, Please direct your forgiveness toward me for resenting them for what they did or what they what I perceive they did against me. By the blood of Jesus, Mama, Dad, I forgive you. And Lord Jesus the Christ in me, please direct your forgiveness toward me for condemning myself, for hating myself, and blaming myself, wanting to hurt myself for what they did or what I perceived they did as if I deserved to be punished, deserved to be killed, deserved not to be loved. Please place your precious blood, 
Please your precious blood on me, on me, because I renounce these curses. I renounce these curses. Let these judgments, and curses these judgments and curses die on the cross, die on the cross. and have no power in my life, and, no in my life. and resurrect the godly, godly way of seeing my family, of seeing my, my parents, of seeing my Christ, and seeing Christ. Christ. And seeing myself, and seeing myself in, your in your eyes. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, you, Lord for, Jesus. The for the cleansing blood that blood washes these sins away. And now spirits of hatred and spirits of murder that are related to my parents, related spirits, to my parents. Spirits, of spirits of suicide and depression, and depression. related to me. Related to you me. have no authority in my life. You have no so I command you to go. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I turn you over to Jesus. Get out. You can't be here anymore. The blood of Jesus is against you. And so in the name of Jesus, I turn you over to Jesus to become part of the footstool of Jesus. Now let's take it on the count of three. On the count of three, we're going to make a loud clap with our hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Okay, one, two, three. Bam! One, wait, 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 I'm going to hold hand out right now, but the script is on, on, on clap. Now, this is not talking about clapping like this. We're talking about, we're talking about one clap. So this, this is like, bam! Ah, then after that clap, that's what we're going to tell the devil with the, with the new program. Okay. And we're telling our brain to line up with the new program. Okay, so this is, this is, this is like, uh, this is laying the axe to the root of the tree. Yes. And once you pray this, now see this is a very powerful. Yes. And I know we we just let me just mention this that uh, <clears throat> so if you are like losing your mind, ah, and you go bam, I cancel another, I cancel another by the power of this in my brain, in my head brain, my heart brain, in my gut brain, in the name of Jesus, and bam, I cancel another by the power of this. Actually, I'm praying this for you right now. Bam! I can't nullify the power of this hatred in your life, in your head brain, your heart brain, your gut brain, in the name of Jesus. And bam! I can't nullify the power of this to defile you and trigger you and to bring hatred into you right now in the name of Jesus. And bam! I turn all this demonic over to Jesus to become part of the food of Jesus. Loose the woman of God. Loose the man of God right now in the name of Jesus. Let him go! Let them go out. The spirits of hate and murder and unforgiveness. Bam! Out! In Jesus' name. Okay, so that's the kind of clap I'm talking about. That's the kind of clap she's talking about. So we're not saying, oh, and I'm not saying you can't praise the Lord. But we ain't talking about that. This is so powerful. That's how you get people healed so quickly. Because you ain't talking about, oh, I'm sorry that you were sick. And we ain't trying to go there. Thank you. So, so any comments or questions? Right, we can, we can come back after Amen. lunch and talk about what, Amen. what, what, what happened. Amen. It's like, did you notice a difference after we prayed this prayer? Yes. 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 You notice yes. a difference? Yes. Yes. Because see, we, we're dealing with, we just dealt with the, what the sister and what happened. Yeah. Even, even, see, I actually, I never prayed about the sister that took the boyfriend or the boyfriend. Because yeah. they got some issues themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any, any other kind of closing comments or prayers uh, before we break for um, lunch here? Yeah, I just have one. It's on a kind of a um, happy note. When I was a little girl, uh, we, did, we needed some flour. We needed some flour. My grandmother sent me to the neighbor to borrow some flour. flour. On my way back, I spilled some in the hallway. Now I'm scared to tell my grandmother that I had spilled it. So I just went on in and she came out a little while later and she saw the flower. And she thought that somebody was putting a curse on her. We had to sprinkle chirping time and all this other stuff not to get rid of this thing. And I wish I'd just told her that I spilled it. 
So what's the moral of the story? I don't know. <laughs> I just wish I had <laughs> you told her so, that I built the flower. So, but is, is, so, the, so, the the work. so the turpentine is casting demons out or what? I, I, I don't know what we used, but we did a whole lot of stuff. Because one thing didn't work, I think she said. So we had to do another thing. Oh, Does anybody, yeah, understand? Does anybody got a word for that? Because I, I really don't have a word for you for that. Cause, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wish I had been honest and told her that I still have a word. I think what she might be saying is it, uh, could that be a curse on her family? Because herself. because what what's the curse though? Because of what she what she did. She because she didn't tell. Dishonesty. Right. Well, what, what's the part of? Because I mean, they're, they're, they're looking. There's a lot of different places we can put it. But what specifically is the thing that you feel like you might be cursed for? For doing that on spell, doing whatever. For not telling the truth. Telling the truth. Telling the so you said it was this. Where was that? It was uh, a lie of omission. Okay. Um, that's sort of like a, a little lie, baby, baby lie. But you want to say something about that? I got from it the fact that her grandmother thought she was cursed. Me, she knew about curses, and she also right. knew what to do to combat. Right, so right. I mean, right. You believe that? How to, if she well, told her to get yeah, drunk, she, she, and that means she's aware of some sort of witchcraft or spells or whatever you want to call it. Did you? Did you, did you something, what do you think about that? Yeah, because we did a lot of. Stuff so this is just a, this is just a, a smidgen here. Okay, because I, I I didn't get I didn't get that because I, I really didn't know what your family was up to. But but that's what this list is about. Forgive us, Lord, for I don't know if that's on your cursing, uh, witchcraft. Yeah. Forgive us. See, so you're uh, we, we talked about. Why don't you write? Why don't you write these three scriptures down? <clears throat> Uh, Nehemiah 9, Daniel 9, and Ezra 9. Did I give you those? Yes. Okay, so, and that's a prayer of cleansing the family. Lord, forgive our family. You said what's the verse? Ezra 9, Daniel 9, and Nehemiah 9. All of them 9. All 9. And so, that's a prayer of like, Lord, Forgive our family for these. You want to go down the list? You actually want to say those. And go down the list. Lord, forgive us for a family that, you know, put curses on people. And ourselves. You know? Um, well, let's just pray that to you. So it's Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Our family. Our family. Our family. My family. Amen. For cursing each other. For cursing each other. Hating each other. Hating each other. Actually, I want to make it bigger than that. For uh, for all occult. For all occult. All cults. All cults. All types of witchcraft. All types of witchcraft. Because you said. Because you said to touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing. And we have touched unclean things. And we have touched unclean things. Some we knew. Some we knew. Some we didn't know. Some we didn't know. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Lord Jesus the Christ in me. Lord Jesus the Christ in me. Please direct your forgiveness. Please direct your forgiveness toward my family. Toward my ancestors. Toward my ancestors. Toward my parents. Toward my parents. Toward my grandparents. Toward my grandparents. Toward my aunts and uncles. Toward my aunts and uncles. Toward my cousins. Toward my cousins. Towards my children. Towards my children. Toward my grandchildren. Towards my grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Great great grandchildren. Please direct your forgiveness. Please direct your forgiveness. Your cleansing blood. Your cleansing blood. To this whole family. To this whole family. Because I confess. Because I confess. It was wrong. It was wrong. It was against your word. It was against your word. It was against your holiness. It was against your holiness. So please forgive me. And so I cancel and nullify. The power of this occult. The power of this occult. To contaminate me. To contaminate me. And my family. And my family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we're gonna make a clap on the sound. It's kind of the count of three. We're gonna make a loud clap. One. Two, three. Bang! Jesus.
I cancel the power of evil in our family. The blood of Jesus is against you. And so I turn this witchcraft and all cult over to Jesus to become part of the footstool of Jesus. Get out right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Say go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I command you to loose. And I command you to loose. And let go. And let go. The peace of God. The peace of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. And the healing anointing. And the healing anointing. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Clap again. One, two, three. Go. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your cleansing power. For your cleansing power. For we are seated in heavenly places. We are seated in heavenly places. Far above principalities. Far above principalities. And powers. And, powers. and rulers of the darkness. And rulers of the darkness. And spiritual wickedness in high places. And spiritual wickedness in high places. So from this perspective. So from this perspective. As we look down. As we look down. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, with your eyes, with your eyes thank, you thank you that you have cleansed, that you have cleansed my family bloodline. My family bloodline. And anything that we forgot, please expose and reveal, for your kingdom has come, for your kingdom has come on, earth, on earth and in my family, and in my family as, it is in as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.